Hey gang, this is Ron from ITMuskie.com, and in this video, we're going to get you better prepared for the A plus exam. Okay, gang, if you're not aware, the A plus exam is what you've been uh, waiting for, it's what you've been trying to get. That's why you're here watching this video. We actually been dropping videos for the last couple of weeks trying to get you prepared for the A plus, and this video is going to be no different. If it's your first time seeing me, if you never uh, rocked out uh, with me before, I'm Rob, uh, the founder of itmatchkey.com and the creator of the Zero to IT Hero course. So we're going to get straight into it. We're going to go through these questions um, as a family and figure out what the answers are to get you better acclimated to taking the actual exam. So let me bring it up right quick and we'll get straight into it. All right, so here's the first question. Uh, Jasmine has asked to install Microsoft Office directly onto Aaron's computing device. Jasmine notifies Aaron that Office cannot be installed directly on that device. Which of the following device types does the customer most likely have? A Mac, a thick client, a thin client, or a phablet? Which one do we think? Before we answer this question, make sure that you like this video and subscribe and share it with anybody who can uh, benefit from it. So most likely, um, the type of device is going to be a thin client. So a thin client is made for a specific purpose, um, whether it be uh, transactions or uh, just waiting around or reservations. But a lot of times it can't actually hold an entire operating system or it may have a minimized operating system to only do one or two functions right all right so roberto is installing hyper v and is getting an error that the software is not able to be installed what should be checked should we check the cache size should we check virtualization support should we check number of cores or should we check hyper threading So, gang, Hyper-V is a type of virtualization software. So we should make sure that our system or device is set up and has virtualization support. That's what we should check. All right, which of the following must be configured when trying to boot a machine from a CD? Is it the TPM? Is it virtualization support? Is it biosecurity? or is it the boot order? So by default, your device should boot from the hard drive. It should try and find the operating system on the hard drive. So to change that default setting to boot from a CD, you have to change the boot order, all right? So to make the machine boot from the CD, you have to change the boot order. All right, which of the following devices are primarily intended to provide 24-7 diagnostic and biometric data regarding the user? Is it a fitness monitor? Is it an e-reader? Is it a smartwatch? Is it a smart phone? Now, this is one of the tricky ones where you can kind of be like, okay, this is, it could be multiple answers. Um, I think it's this. I think it's that. You're probably wrestling with a couple answers right now. But one of the key things that you need to do um, when you're in the exam and when you're taking these exams is make sure that you look at the keyword. So the keyword would be primarily. Which one of the which one of these things are primarily intended to provide diagnostic and biometric data regarding the user? That would be a fitness monitor. So a smartwatch and a smartphone can do those things, but that's not the primary function of those devices. So a laptop login in screen can barely be seen despite adjusting the display's brightness setting. Which of the following display components may be defective? Is it the backlight? Is it the digitizer? Is it the inverter? Or is it the polarizer? What do we think? Make sure that you like this video and subscribe. Like this video and subscribe. So let's go with backlight. All right, so the backlight 
uh, may be going bad. It may be defective because you can kind of see the um, screen, but you can't. Now, if this is real world troubleshooting, instead of messing with the backlight, the first thing we would do is just to make sure that the brightness uh, wasn't turned all the way down or that the um, battery uh, wasn't dead or dying and stuff like that. Make sure it's charged because a lot of time to say battery laptops will go dim uh, to save you um, some battery life. Right. Danielle reports that her company laptop cannot pick up a wireless connection. However, using. Uh, however, users working on their laptop in the common areas have Internet connectivity, which of the following is most likely the cause. Is it weak RF signals? Out of date Ethernet drivers, enabled Mac filtering, or duplicate IP addresses. What do you think? What is most likely the cause? I'm going to go with weak RF signals. Let's see if that's right. All right. So, um, routers, Wi Fi signals, uh, hotspots. Um, access points, those types of things depend on the proximity uh, that you are to the actual access point or to the router. So the farther you get away, the weaker the signal is going to be. And you may it may be so weak where you actually can't even connect. Right. So in the common areas, that's probably where the router is actually placed. And that's where most people are. Right. Because they kind of know, hey, in the center, that's where the router is, where the access point is. And the closer I get to it the better signal that I'll get. Uh, which of the following is required doing the installation of a digitizer? Must be connected to the internet, must be cleaned, must have the latest software installed, must be calibrated. Which one of those things do we think should be a requirement when we mess around with the digitizer all right so i think it is the digitizer needs to be calibrated right you gotta it has to be calibrated because if it's not calibrated the digitizer is what actually um allows you to put your finger on something and your i mean the device actually feels your fingerprint or your finger moving around and the digitizer if it's not calibrated right it may not feel your finger and may be too sensitive or not sensitive enough. Makes sense. All right, again, we have a few questions in. Make sure that you um, like this video and subscribe, share it with anybody that can um, benefit from this stuff, right? Another thing, um, a question that may come up is uh, where did I get these questions from? What are these questions? So these questions are questions that um, I made up. These are questions that um, students in the Zero to IT Hero program um, rock through. Um, and these are actually the sampler questions. We actually have some more in-depth questions in the actual course um, to get them better prepared for um, the exams, right? So they rock through all of the training inside of the program and they go through a 90 question exam and then they knock it out. But this stuff right here, uh, this is just supplemental. Um, is this enough to pass the exam? No, ma'am and no, sir. You'll need a, a full course, which you can get at itmetricky.com. So um, Albert, just installed a new Soho router. Whenever a new user comes online and begins streaming media, browsing slows down for the other users. Which of the following settings can Albert adjust so the experience is universal for all servers, or excuse me, all users? Is it DSL? Is it QoS? Is it BNC? Or is it WAN? So um, something I always harp on is making sure that you know what acronyms stand for right so there's gonna be a lot of acronyms on the actual test a lot of acronyms and if you don't know what those acronyms stand for it's gonna make the test a lot easier or a lot harder right so if you don't know what they stand for um the test is gonna be pretty difficult pretty difficult if you do know what they stand for a lot of times the answer will jump out at you right so the answer to this would be qos or quality of service quality of service all right, for which of the following types of printers should a technician obtain a maintenance kit containing a fuser, transfer roller, and pickup rollers? Would it be a thermal printer? Would it be an impact printer? Would it be an, an inject printer or a laser printer? 
So I'm gonna go with a laser printer. You would need all that stuff. Bam, very good. All right, so which of the following contains potentially dangerous voltages and should be handled with care, even if the power has been recently disconnected? Is that a laser printer? Is that a wireless router? Is that a paper shredder? Or is it a CRT monitor? So um, CRT monitors, like the old school monitors, actually store a lot of energy and store a lot of charge even when they're disconnected from power. So you will want to be careful when you're handling a CRT old school monitor. All right, the HR department needs to connect directly to a printer with continuous access. Which of the following connection types will achieve this? Would it be serial? Would it be Ethernet? Would it be USB? Or would it be eSATA? So connect directly to a printer with continuous access. Um, the only option on here that would allow the entire HR department to connect directly to the printer would be Ethernet or Ethernet. All right, Erica notices fine particles on printouts and in the printer itself. Which of the following tools is recommended to fix this issue? Will we use alcohol? Will we use a toner vacuum? Will we use compressed air? Or will we use a moist towel? Which one will we use? So the easiest thing, the best thing to do would be to use an actual toner vacuum to pick that stuff up. Compressed air would blow it everywhere. The alcohol or the moist towel would just rub black stuff all over the computer, which is what we don't want. All right, Jim set up his network a week ago. While walking his dog one day, he notices that he still has connectivity to his network, even if he's across the street from his house. How can Jim increase the security of his home network? Should he reduce the range of his network, hide SSID, and use WPA2 encryption? Should he increase the range of the network, hide SSID, and use WPA2? Should he disable Mac filtering, power cycle, and lock all devices? Or should he point Wi-Fi direction towards his backyard? If you're enjoying this so far, uh, like, a, like the video for the YouTube algorithm, and then drop a comment in the uh below uh, to let me know that you uh that you're liking the video also um if you are um uh, interested interested in training make sure that you go over to itmaster.com and enroll into the zero to it hero bundle it is in the comment section below um, we got people getting certified every day so if you head over there um, you'll get training for uh, seven certifications um, to include a plus net plus security plus and some microsoft training and you'll get the skill set you'll get the knowledge and you'll actually get the certification to um, go ahead and break into it um, make more money and just have a more satisfying job and actually secure your future so you're not I'm a victim of technology such as automation um, and you're actually a victor of technology because you'll be on the right side. Anyway, going back to this, the way to uh, fix this guy's issue would be to reduce the range. Hide the SSID, which is um, the network name, and you would um, use the most highest level of encryption, which would be WPA2 as of right now. All right, so uh, Lorraine is building an HTPC for a new customer. What parts list would she most likely use? It's another one of those things where if you don't know what the acronym stand for, it's gonna make the question a lot harder than it needs to be. So out of those options, what do you think the answer would be?
So HCPC stands for home theater PC, right? Home theater PC. So for a home theater PC, out of all these, which would be most important, right? I think it would be this one because you're going to be really, 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 really interested in the internet connection, right? You're going to be interested in the internet connection because if it's a home theater PC, you're probably going to be streaming a lot of different stuff. So you want to make sure you got um, enough RAM, but mostly you got good sound and a high speed internet connection. Okay. All right. FTP uses both ports 20 and 21. Is that true or false? The file transfer protocol uses both of those ports. Is that true or is that false? Hey gang, make sure that you like this video, uh, subscribe and share, and also uh, you can enroll inside of a program over at itmagicy.com. So um, that is true. It uses both 20 and 21, right? And one caveat on the actual exam, you won't have any true or false or no yes or no questions. None of those, none of those types of questions on the actual exam. Uh, does LDAP use port 389? Is that true or false? Does LDAP use port 389? True or false? So uh, LDAP um, uses port 389, the lightweight directory access protocol. So um, I just wanted to show this to you because, um, like I said, on the actual, just to make sure you guys pay attention, uh, on the actual exam, no true or false questions. You won't see any questions like this. But LDAP uh, uses port 389. Another thing I want to point out is um, at the bottom of this, it says, do you need a voucher? Um, vouchers are not available. Discounted kind of vouchers are not available to um, students who are not enrolled in training. So if you want a discounted voucher, um, you can head over uh, to the link in the description below to um, enroll inside the Zero to IT Hero program. All right, so computers should be plugged into an UPS or UPS while flashing the BIOS. Is that true or is that false? That's another uh, acronym. So if you didn't know uh, what it's still for, it may make things I'm a little bit more difficult. I'm going to say that this is true. All right, so true. A computer should be plugged into an uninterruptible power supply. All right, so pretty much like a power backup uh, while you're flashing the BIOS. Uh, if a user's wireless connection suddenly stops on a laptop computer, you should check the wireless access point first. Is that true or is that false? Is it true or is that false? That is true. No, it's not. Uh, that is false. So um, that's not the first thing you should check. The first thing you should check is um, the actual connection on your computer, right? And a lot of times you may not even know where the access point is, especially if you're using Wi-Fi or if you're at somebody else's house. You may not know where the access point is. So the first thing to check is always your device to make sure that you got the settings and everything set up on that device correctly. An ESD wrist strap should be connected to a technician's wrist and an electrical ground. Is that true or is that false? That's definitely true. So ESD is electrostatic discharge electrostatic discharge you never want to have um static electricity and be touching any of your devices because it can make them stop working all right gang so this was a another uh, a plus practice test this was another um helpful guide for you guys make sure that you like the video make sure you subscribe and other than that i'll see you in class